It's the weekend and time for your body is today. Even news update for Friday, May 20. Police at the Black Rock Station are conducting investigations into the unnatural death of a man at Dash Gap Bank Hall, St. Michael, which occurred around 5.55 p.m. Acting Inspector Rodney Innes updated reporters at the scene. Police personnel from Black Rock Police Station responded to a report. A report that was received by the said Black Rock Station from our operations control room about 6.15 p.m. today, Friday the 20th of May. The nature of the report was that a man was stabbed whilst at Dash Gap Bank Hall in St. Michael, this specific area. Uh, police quickly responded to this area and we were able to confirm that there was in fact the lifeless body of a male lying on the ground at the entrance of a bar located along the said Dash Gap Road. Uh, we later learned that there was an altercation between two males and as a result, one received an injury and his lifeless body was pronounced dead by a medical practitioner who visited the scene earlier this evening. Uh, we are still very much in our investigation. You can see we have the area cordon and our forensic personnel are in place. And we will update you in terms of the identity of that person when, when we can release it. Of course, when the family and the next of kin are, are informed. Earlier this evening, police also mounted a probe into the discovery of human skeletal remains in a cane field at Bannantyne Road, Christchurch. And another event, a discovery of, of what appears to be human remains. We received that earlier today, about 10 past 4 p.m. today as well. Um, we had the workers operating the harvesting machinery at a cane field on Bannantyne Road in Christchurch. They reported that... Um, what they saw was the skeleton remains of a human body. Now, we responded personnel from the Oystins police station. They are currently at the scene, and we were able to confirm that, you know, the skeleton remains of the body was there. We conducted our investigation. Um, as you can appreciate, the area is unlit. No street lighting at all. It's very dark, and we've had to cordon the area, restrict the traffic flow, direct, divert the traffic, and hold that scene, and we will hold that until first leg tomorrow where we will continue our investigations into what has indeed happened there. That's as much as we can say now. We do not know if it's a male or female, and we will get done on our investigations very early in the morning where we can extend the scene. In other news this Friday, on day two of the Agri-Investment Forum in Guyana, the issue of transportation in the region was a major talking point, and at a news conference today, Prime Minister Mia Motley made clear that the issue is critical to satisfying food demand in the Caribbean and therefore must be addressed. All that you're producing, if we can't get it to the island chain in a manner that is quick and affordable, then it's of no use. So I think we've agreed that we will look, for example, with an investment in the Guyana Barbados Food Terminal that will allow us to be able to move food from whichever countries are doing mass production, not just from those, but for example, Dominica is a vast producer of agricultural produce. That was the Prime Minister of Barbados, Mia Motley, speaking during a press briefing held at the Artichong Conference Center at Liliandal Dorchong on Friday, just minutes before she departed Guyana. The Prime Minister was in Guyana for the Agri Investment Forum and Expo, which is meant to galvanize regional players, including politicians and private sector entities, into advancing a regional food security agenda. And after participating in the forum, the Prime Minister believes that there is mounting political will and interest in moving food security efforts along. But what has constrained food security efforts for years now has been the existence of long-standing trade barriers. Even so, Prime Minister Motley believes that by July, when the next CARICOM Heads of Government meeting will be held, there will be an increased appetite to finally remove many of those trade barriers. And we've said, look, we need to be very practical now. We can't move produce from country to country if people are going to lose their investment. No farmer is going to send a container load of limes and, 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 and lemons to another Caribbean country only for it to rot on the port. And we therefore um, hope that at the next Heads of Government meeting, which is in about two months' time, between now and then, and then immediately after, possibly in Dominica, that we can go and sit down 
without all of the fanfare, without all of the frills, and just attack the top barriers. The overarching goal of the Caribbean Community Caricom is to cut the region's massive U.S. $5 billion food import bill by 25% by 2025. The Barbados Workers Union is keeping close tabs on the rising cost of living and General Secretary Tony Moore says the union will continue to ensure workers can cope in the current environment. Progress, we have a meeting coming up in the next couple of days, next week Wednesday, where we will be considering um, some more, a number of options, then I will probably be a lot freer to speak in the name of the Executive Council and not speak in the name of to any more as we contemplate what other solutions we can put to government now that aren't just wild and things that we will suggest because we will can suggest but are things that will be practicable and that could really make a difference. Moore, who has been pressing for better terms and conditions for public servants, has not ruled out a pay hike. And she says the union is not only making the case for public servants, but it has been engaging the private sector on better pay for its workers as well. We want to talk. Let's get into it. If you say you can't do it, let's see the facts. Let's look at the books. Let's look at your operations. Let's judge or measure what you say you are or aren't doing against what your workers can actually see. And then there are some companies that are way more advanced, that have very mature agreements with advanced terms and conditions. The same thing that we have suggested for the public sector, we think is more applicable now. Where you cannot give a worker a 2% or 3%, can we look at things like medical insurance plans because as costs of energy impact costs all over, workers need a little ease. You need to be able to know that if you go to a doctor and he recommends to you that you have to have a procedure, you don't have to wait until the QEH has the capacity to accommodate you, but with a medical plan, you can access these things. The BWU does not see negotiations and worker representation as black or white or as a straight line. We recognize that the dynamic is different out there in the work environment depending on the company we're dealing with and that's what we commit to. Now for the latest COVID-19 update, Barbados recorded 310 cases of the viral illness, 127 males and 183 females. From the 1,118 tests carried out by the Best of Santos Public Health Laboratory on Thursday, the cases comprise 67 persons under the age of 18 and 243 who were 18 years and older. There were 98 people in isolation facilities and 4,329 in home isolation. A 64-year-old fully vaccinated man succumbed to the virus on Thursday. COVID-19-related deaths now stand at 436. There's regional and international news after this short break. More oxygen means more energy, means more adventure. Cure Oxygen, natural spring water infused with more oxygen to improve your energy, immunity and performance. The next generation of hydration. Cure Oxygen, nature's ultimate water. Caribbean Cool is a refreshing juice drink that contains 100% vitamin C that you can enjoy any time of the day. It has a refreshingly awesome range of Caribbean flavors. Moby, orange, fruit punch, pineapple, sorrel, and pineapple coconut. Suitable for any occasion. Caribbean Cool. To regional news, Guyana's Vice President Dr. Barrett Jagdeo has called on regional leaders to step up to the plate and drive the ambitious goals to drastically cut regional food imports by 2025. More in this report from Newsroom Guyana. The former president's 2005 proposal to CARICOM named the Jagdeo Initiative is the basis of the vision it seeks to reduce the region's food import bill by 25% by 2025. It also addresses the need for food security. Dr. Jagdeo delivered a feature address at the Agri-Investment Forum on Friday at the Arthur Chung Conference Center, where he noted that Guyana has already begun to do what needs to be done in a practical way to ensure the goal is achieved. Similarly, he said each member state must act 
at the national level to contribute to the goal which requires an increased output in agriculture by some US 7.5 billion in the next three years. He said leaders must leave with time decisions on the necessary high-level meetings to be led by the respective regional governments to discuss among other things a list of fiscal concessions for investors along with decisions on how to group projects and remove barriers to trade. This process has to be proven right up from the top. And the serious coming against the earlier year. Fiscal concessions. We the same way that we increase the share of the budget to the agri food security sector, we have to have a commitment of package of fiscal concessions that are comparable with what other sectors in our countries enjoy. On the international scene, the World Health Organization held an emergency meeting today to discuss the recent outbreak of monkeypox, a viral infection more common to West and Central Africa. Officials expect there will be more confirmed cases from Canada's National Microbiology Laboratory in Winnipeg, where patient samples are being tested. There's probably been some hidden chains of transmission that could have occurred for quite a, a number of weeks, uh, given the sort of global... Uh, situation that we're seeing right now. Thought to be like a milder form of the smallpox virus, monkeypox doesn't usually spread outside of Africa. More than 500 cases have been reported in Nigeria since 2017, including a handful of deaths. Scientists there warn cross-protection from the smallpox vaccines offered decades ago has long since faded away. The longer we are away from smallpox vaccine, uh, the more the likelihood that monkeypox will then begin to spread. We've been saying that for quite some time. I think now our, our fears are being confirmed. In Africa, outbreaks of monkeypox typically ebb and flow, yeah, says this Nigerian virologist. We don't see a, 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 you know, rapid transmission like you see with COVID, for example. But also, it dies down almost within a few months uh, after one or two generations of spread. It kind of dies down. And then suddenly it pops up again. With an unusual number of cases being reported all at once in countries around the world, the path for this outbreak isn't yet clear. What's reassuring so far, physicians say, is that patients do seem to be recovering. That's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbidastoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook. And sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, as well as Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.